Hey guys, it's Aman and Christina from, from Our Rich Journey. Journey. Today we are talking about investment accounts for financial independence. We are going to be talking about tax advantage accounts and taxable accounts because these accounts are very important on your journey towards financial independence. If you know our story, you know that we were able to achieve financial independence and retire early in less than eight years. And a big part of that had to deal with the types of accounts we put our money into. And so on today's video, we are going to be talking about those accounts and we're going to be talking about the process in which we invested in those accounts. This is typically called your order of operations because there is a order in which you want to fund each one of these accounts. So like Amon said, we're going to be talking about our investment accounts and the order that we invested in those accounts. Now, both of those two things are very important because you want to make sure that you're investing in the most optimal way possible. Now, when we say optimal, we are talking about your specific situation, what's optimal for you. So in that sense, you're taking into account your goals, what type of tax advantages you can get from investing in certain accounts and your overall timeline. Now, picking what's optimal for you can be kind of challenging because the number of accounts that are available are many. In fact, there are over 10 accounts that most people can invest in. And so you want to pick something that is, fits your situation, something that you have access to. So those accounts are either taxable accounts or tax deferred accounts. The types of accounts that people can invest in include 401ks, a Roth 401k, 403bs, 457s, solo 401ks, SEP IRAs, simple IRAs, traditional IRAs, Roth IRAs, health savings accounts, brokerage accounts, 529 and custodial accounts. So those are just the main accounts. There are over 10 of them. So how do you go about deciding how to prioritize putting your money in those accounts? Because you can't invest in all of them. You have to invest in what is most optimal for your situation. So you have to prioritize where your limited amount of money goes. For us, we had to think of the investment accounts that would grow our money over the long term, but also have our short term fire goals in mind. We also had to keep in mind our specific tax advantages that we wanted to implement when we were investing. So the investment accounts that we invested in included our 401k employer sponsored retirement account, also known as a TSP or thrift savings plan, Roth IRA account, traditional IRA, HSA account, custodial accounts for Sonoa and Malia brokerage accounts, and finally, a stock market crash emergency fund of cash with two years of living expenses. Now, those are the seven accounts that we invested in, but what we really want to focus on also in this video is the order of investing in those accounts. But I really want to emphasize something. Each account plays a significant role in our fire plan. We have assigned them a duty, and when we call on them, they better be ready to act. So it is important that you put some thought behind identifying each one of the accounts that you select. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about that next. So let's begin with talking about the order that we invested into these accounts. Now, when we were investing, we focused on our tax deferred accounts first. And the reason for this is sort of mind blowing. If you're investing in a tax deferred account versus a regular account without a tax advantage, your tax deferred account is growing so much faster than the other regular accounts. And this is because earnings in a tax deferred or tax sheltered account are not eaten up by taxes. So there's more room for that money to grow with compound interest. And I think to illustrate this, we must show an example because it is mind blowing. When you see it on paper, you realize that a tax deferred account is the most optimal way to start your investments. So for example, if you invest the max 401k annual contribution of $19,500 into your 401k and add that same $19,500 each year, the 401k account returning a 10% tax free for 10 years would be worth $392,000. But that same contribution to a non-retirement taxable account will only grow to $322,000 if you're in the mid tax bracket. So over a 10 year period, you make $70,000 more in a tax deferred account than a taxable account. That is mind blowing for the same period and the same amount of money. You make $70,000 more. So with that type of tax advantage, you know, we are starting with the tax deferred accounts. So the first account that we fund is our 401k up to the employer match. That is where we start. 
This account was crucial because it allowed our investments to grow tax deferred, it lowered our taxable income, and our employer matched a 5% into this account. So after each of us have contributed to our 401ks up to our employer match, we next open Roth IRAs. And those Roth IRAs, we contribute the max to both of those. Now a Roth IRA is something that is very special because later on down the road, we can use our Roth IRA to do Roth conversions. Now we're not gonna talk about that in this video, but go back and look at our video on the Roth conversion ladder. But Roths are also really special because the amount of money that you put into the Roth the principal amount you can withdraw if you need it. So in a way, it's also acting as an emergency fund. So next is the Roth. Now, if you don't have a 401k, you should definitely open up a Roth IRA. There are so many benefits to this type of investment account. And the first big benefit is that your earnings are growing tax free. And the second big benefit is when you take this money out at retirement age, you're also taking it out tax free. So after the 401k, the Roth IRA, you got to get that HSA. If you are eligible for an HSA, a health savings account, oh my goodness. This is the granddaddy of retirement accounts. But see, most people don't recognize this. And we're gonna do a whole video on the health savings account and the triple threat that it is. But if you can, max out your HSA. So HSAs are triple tax advantage because the money that you contribute into them is tax deductible. All the earnings and the interest are also tax free. And then when you withdraw them, if you're withdrawing them for qualified medical expenses, it's also tax free. And the great thing about HSAs are they do not expire annually. So if you have money in an HSA, it rolls over to the next year, even if you don't use it. Now I surveyed the people that I used to work with and none of them were using an HSA. They were missing out on a huge opportunity to invest their money and have it grow for them. I mean, healthcare costs are gonna continue to go up. So you can also use this money to offset healthcare costs. I mean, that's what it's supposed to be used for, but there are other hacks that you can use this money for. We're not gonna get into those in this video because that is gonna be a mega future video, but just look into the HSA as another account. So now when you're looking into an HSA, look into all the different types of things that you can invest with your HSA. You can invest in the index funds. For us, for our particular situation, we invested in REITs. So all the money that we contributed to our HSA was invested into REITs. And at this point, once you've funded those accounts to the limits that we've identified, if you have money left over, go back to your 401k and max that out. That's exactly what we did. Now, to do this, you have to get your savings rate up. And that is a key part of financial independence, is having that money available to invest in these accounts. So we went back to our 401k and maxed that out for the both of us every single year. Now, the reason why we go back and we invest in the full maximum amount that we can invest in our 401k is because it further reduces our taxable income. So now the next step, after we do all of those types of investments, the next thing we invest in is our kids custodial account. Now notice when we say our kids custodial account, we actually don't say a 529. And for us, this is because we did not invest in a 529. We stuck, we stuck exclusively to custodial accounts for our girls. Now you're probably thinking, what? They funded their kids last or fifth? That's not the case. We, well, it is the case. We funded them fifth because the tax deferred accounts are more advantageous. Our money works in a more optimal fashion. We knew we were gonna get to the kids' accounts, but we wanted to make sure that if we're gonna prioritize things, we know that our money grows best in the tax deferred accounts. So now at this point, we are investing in our kids' custodial accounts. Now, how much you invest in your kids' custodial accounts or your kids' 529 accounts all depends on your college plan for your kids. We have a whole nother plan for our kids that we're gonna get into in a different video, but it's not dependent on just the custodial accounts. Now, step six is to invest in our brokerage accounts, and we throw a ton of money into our brokerage accounts. And this, of course, is after our tax deferred or tax sheltered accounts and our custodial accounts. But the reason why we put so much money into our brokerage accounts is because this is the money that is gonna fund or pay for our expenses in our early retirement before we each reach our regular retirement age. 
So your fire plan is going to require this unless you're going to do a Roth conversion ladder. And we talk about this in another video, but a Roth conversion ladder allows you to access the money from your tax deferred accounts, really your 401k and your traditional IRA earlier, but penalty free. Now there is a chain of events that you have to go through to access that money. So we didn't want to have to go through that chain of events, but it is an option. So we developed this brokerage account Then we threw whatever excess money we had into this account. So if we sold a property, we took a portion of those of those monies and put it into, into this account. If we had a side hustle, we were dumping this money into the brokerage accounts. So we have amassed a very large brokerage account. And the final account that we funded on our journey towards financial independence was our stock market crash emergency fund. Now this is a different fund than a normal emergency fund. But when you are financially independent and you have retired early, you're not making any more money, a good portion of your income comes from the stock market. And so should the stock market crash, we created a fund to handle that crash. This fund is the amount of money that we could live off of for two years straight before we had to access money from our stock accounts. Now, this was very important for us, but it was something that we held off to the end of our fire journey because we didn't want to have money sitting in cash or CDs that wasn't growing in the tax deferred account or the brokerage account. Instead, towards the last two years of our journey, we started putting money into this stock market crash emergency fund. So the reason why we have a two year cash emergency fund is because historically the bear markets have lasted an average of 18 months. Now we found if we have a two year cash reserve, then we can withstand that 18 month dip and be okay. So these bear markets are rare, but you must have that type of flexibility in your plan. I mean, I think with that amount of time in a bear market, we would make other changes, but that two years of emergency fund, it's crucial. It helps us sleep at night. So those were the seven accounts that we invested in in order to reach financial independence and to retire early in Lisbon, Portugal. Now, of course, we talked about at the beginning of this video, making a plan, an investment plan that is optimal for you. So these seven investment accounts may not work for you. Maybe you need to invest in something else, but the idea is to look at your strategy, look at the order of accounts that you need to invest in and look at the specific accounts that you need to invest in and take action so so that you can begin your journey towards fire. Now, if you like this video, make sure you give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and join, join the, the journey. journey.